Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's around 4.53, but I haven't told you which day it is and where I am. Therefore, information I gave you, it's about as useful as chocolate teapot. Now, let's discuss the headache of exchanging the time info. Databricks and others are struggling here. Only on Earth there can be up to 26 hour difference depends where we are. Hit like, subscribe and let's discuss how to handle that problem once forever. So let's say that we have a new colleague in our team. She just joined us, it's her first day in the office and very happy person. She has very simple task, at least that's how it looks like. She needs to combine a data coming from the different units. The data about, let's say, safe, cybersecurity, doesn't matter. She needs to combine some events coming from the different location. We are working in international organizations, so we have three locations, Paris, let's say Egypt, and uh, let it be Sydney. And from all those locations, she's having the, getting the information about the events in the local timestamp. So she gets some sort of the date plus the time. And time, of course, uh, 1 to 12 a.m., either in 1 to 12 p.m. And the same from Egypt, 1 to 12 a.m., 1 to 12 p.m. And of course, from Sydney, everyone really helpful, everyone collecting, picking, picking up and sending her a data in the local timestamp. Everyone really want to help her. So she just need to compare to figure out what was the total number of events happening on some specific hours globally. She, she needs to just compare, let's say 6 p.m. is 6, 6 p.m. in Paris. So this is like 6 p.m. in Paris. She need to compare with the right hour in Egypt. And she is clever. She already knows that there is such things like a time zones. So she don't take a 6 p.m. in Egypt. She takes a 7 p.m. in Egypt. Now, when it's going about Sydney, she check it and she knows that there is a nine hours difference between Egypt and Sydney. So she is taking, if I'm counting right, 4 a.m. So not only different hour, but also different day. And so far, so good. There is a couple more locations, but she already figured out that it's not so complex. She can write that logic to figure out which hour in Paris is the same as in Texas, Sydney, Great Britain, whatever else. It's somehow difficult, but it's not a mission impossible. So she have really good time and she really enjoyed her first time until, until she realized that there is such a thing like a day life saving time. Meaning once a year we are changing our clocks from the time which we consider as standard to daylight saving time. So in at least in my location, I'm moving a clock from two to three at the end of the March. So now when I'm taking a 6 p.m. in Paris before the time change, now I need to take a 7 p.m. But what about the Egypt? Well, it happens that the Egypt is also changing the clocks, just a different month. It's also switching from two to three, but not in March, but in April. So for, for one month, she need to still take a 7 p.m. One month later in April, she will need to start 8 p to take 8 p.m., but right now 7. What about Sydney? Well, of course, everyone knows that Australia, depends on the region, have a different rule about the, uh, depends on the changing the time. And when it's going about the Sydney, it's in the location where you don't change the time from standard to daylight saving time. So you continue, continue taking 4 a.m. Looking at that globally, she stops smiling very quickly. Fortunately, some people have figured out that no, we cannot keep a a events in the local timestamp. It's just too complex. Even, even, even if I manage to build that complex logic of combining which timestamp to compare which with one, it just falls apart where there is a change in the time. So we cannot continue. Do that. We need to start talking one language. And what is commonly considered as the standard is to talk in the timestamp, which for sure you have seen, which look like a, you have a year, then you have a month, then you have a date, date, then you have the information that you will now talk about the timestamp, you are going to have hours, minutes, a small capital, I don't remember, and at the end you are going to have Z. Z stands for, of course, everyone know, Zulu. Nobody knows that, I'm just joking, or very few people knows that, because why to bother with such things? 
But this is actually important. The timestamp given with the information that this is Zulu, this is equivalent to the timestamp given in the UTC, Universal Time Coordinated. This is a standard way of talking about the time around the world. So every time we see a timestamp with the Z at the end, we at least know which timestamp we know. And if we would receive the same from all the units, from all the organizations around the world, we would be good, yes? No, we would be better, but let's look on that. So let's think for a second about changing a time from standard to daylight saving time, where we move our clocks from two to three. And this is scenario number one. And scenario number two, the second way around. So the daylight saving time, we are switching to standard ST. So we are moving the clocks from three to two. Okay. So the first scenario is something like this, that we received some events about the sales or the events from the network cybersecurity. Then we are changing the time to suddenly from two to three. So what is happening is that for one hour, we don't have, we don't receive any events and then we receive events normally. Well, it looks awkward, but it's not a big deal. Now let's think about the second scenario for, for a second. Let me change the color that we have 3 a.m. and we are going from the daylight saving time to standard. So we are moving the clock this direction. So how the events looks like. So we were receiving the events, we were receiving the events and suddenly clocks shows 3 a.m. We are switching time by one hour and again repeating the events which appeared at two. By this way, we are duplicating an event between two and three and we are completely losing the information about the sequence of them. Therefore, keeping the information about the timestamp is Zulu, it's improvement, yes, but it's not sufficient. We all like to think that we are unique. The truth is that not always, and not always our problems are unique. Actually, when it's going about this one, this is very well known problem and there is amazing solution already existing in place. Just for some reason, People are struggling to follow it. The solution has been developed by occasion of developing one of the greatest operating system in the world, which is Unix. And if you have set Windows, then just please turn off that video. So the ladies and gentlemen working on developing Unix, what they have figured out that instead of using local time zone, in, you know, you can imagine all those machines around the world which have a need of synchronizing the time. And what they basically said, that trying to do that in local time zone, th this is crazy. It's almost mission impossible. Always something will go wrong. If not today, then tomorrow some country will decide to change the information about the time zones or they will stop switching the time. It's just impossible. Zulu, better, but again, it's not sustainable. And instead of that, what they have figured out, what the idea is that there is a special moment in time, which is 1st of January 1970 in the time zone, which is called UTC, which is Universal Time Coordinated, which is a basic time, time zone in the world. You can read about it in the Wikipedia. And the idea is that something what is called Unix time should always show you number of seconds between now, no matter where you are. This is the time zone independent and this Unix epoch. So this very special moment in time and no matter where, where, you, where you are and what device you are using, if you have a mobile phone or you are using a laptop or maybe you have a smart TV, inside of that there is a small clock which is exactly measuring the number of the seconds, tick, 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 since Unix epoch and your local time zone, your, your, your Zulu time or doesn't matter. The only thing which is matter is the number of the second from the Unix epoch. I'm sure that you saw that number multiple times and you could thought in the past why somebody would save a time zone in exactly that format. That's exactly why. That's exactly why to make everyone 100% sure what time it is. Therefore, next time, once you will see such a number in the database, don't be, not, don't be mad on the person designing the database. Be grateful that you have opportunity 
to at least recognize very precisely what date and what time it is. Starting from that Unix time, it's very simple in PySpark, in Pandas, to convert it to any other timestamp you want. Therefore, if I could give a small advice to the Databricks team, basically anyone working on the database design or dealing with the problem of timestamp exchange, those, the free advice would be, number one, that the timestamp in Zulu so with the Z at the end, is always better than timestamp in the local time zone. Advice number two is that Unix time, time is very much always better than timestamp with Zulu. The problem, the only problem of the Unix time that it's not so immediately human readable, therefore you can very easily convert it to the human readable, pro, uh, human readable format. But if you are really so much concerned about keeping the timestamp in the human readable format, then, and here comes my third advice, don't put it into the database instead of the, of the Unix time. If you care about the readability, Anyway, the first thing to put into the database is the unit ta Unix time and then put whatever you will believe is the most readable for your user, like a timestamp in Zulu. The most important thing is don't do that instead, but on top of the Unix timestamp. And that's it. I think that those are three main things to remember whenever we are working with the timestamp. If you have other ideas or you don't agree with those, use the comments below. Otherwise, I will try to put on the GitHub small notebook showing how to generate the Unix or how to check the Unix timestamp, how to convert it to other timestamp. It's not a big deal, but I will play some examples. Uh, besides that, thank you very much for watching. Hit subscribe and see you soon.